unbelievable smart guy, but you know, his first job was at NASA. And it was because all the lectures raved about it, because you know, they got this perfect code in Moses. You know, Moses came down with the cabinet and his code. You know? But it, it's, you, you know, you're good at something. Each one of you is different. You're good at something. You've got to get that down so that people can look at this and go, yeah, yeah, that's John, that's Cameron. That's great. And that's, that's, that's how it works, right? Right, so this is actually an example of um, what somebody did in a summer of code project. And he's actually standing at the behind me in the room. Cameron doesn't probably realise this. I, uh, we sat down a couple of years ago and figured this out. So here are a bunch of things that he did in our summer of code project. So this project was to take a bunch of visualisation techniques for maps. Right, so we've got you know, Google Maps sort of things. We're trying to figure that out. So in terms of the objectives, we're trying to research different techniques, what techniques work and what they don't. We're designing new techniques, so we're trying to figure out which ones work. Um, we want to build an API so we can actually do it again. Right? Um, then we built some demos. There was some learning going on. So the learning flash, that's an objective. Right, so then some analysis. So when you look at these techniques, you think about the projects you're doing, all the projects and, and coursework, you're learning stuff about what works and what doesn't work. Right? If I do this, it won't compile. If I do that, it does compile. Right? It's learned behavior, right? So you're learning this stuff. So you have to have anal analysis to know that's good or that's bad. And you're making decisions. Like if I do this, there's a risk that it won't work. So if I do that, it's all okay. Alright? So there's sort of some decision making going on. We we're doing some uh, selection of appropriate talks. So this works, that doesn't. Um, and we were designing this API so that actually we could repeat it. In terms of the actions, well, you have got a framework to compare techniques. The person learned all this stuff at the end. Developed an API system to actually overcome a bunch of problems. Now, we haven't really reused it, but we've used a lot of those techniques further on in a lot of other work that we've done, so it's been an investment that has paid off. Um, and there's a misdone here. Yeah? New peripheral programming skills like playing around with Earth learning. Uh, playing around with imagery. Um, and then the results, well, we created this IPI, we had a demo to show us. And the behaviors that were displayed, well, in the, in the top bit, we did a lot of analysis and planning. Second bit, we did analysis and we made some decisions. Um, third one was, well, we had results, we got some results. Very determined. This stuff, the particular stuff that we were doing, sucks. Lots of mistakes, lots of stupid things that can go wrong that affect it, you know. So, you know, you have to be pretty determined to see it through to the end. And you lose it. So this is, you know, that's a, a, a strength. So then at the end, well, there's confidence in a particular tool, and there's fast learning. So if you look at that, what we've got, if you actually sort of count up what are multiply appearing, we've got analysis, we've got fast learning. So this is an example for this particular project, this piece of work, those are two things you can bring up. Okay? You get to say. And if, and if you got this person to come and talk about what they did, well, and if it was like you know, learning all this stuff, or how did they make the decision on what to choose, you could actually talk about it. Okay? Because you actually know it. Alright? Imagine if you were doing one of your programming things, and um, like here, 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 who likes documentation? No one. Oh, one person, maybe. Okay, who likes testing? Okay, so imagine that um, I'm an employer and I go, testing is really important for us. Tell me about what testing you're going to do. Oh, shit. Um, yeah, well, we had time constraints. Didn't, couldn't test so much. I understand the theory, but we weren't able to put it in practice because we were so busy. How do you think the employer's going to work that? Are they going to go, oh, he's a nice guy, I'll let him off? <laughs> no. They're going to go, no fucking idea, <laughs> right? So that's the problem, right? So this is why you want to talk about the stuff that you're good at, right? Very, very important. Right, so, you know, here, here with the stuff there, just pulling that out. Right, so the second thing I talk about is this technical skills resume. Um, and I'll talk about this later. This is one thing that pretty much Three out of forty, seventy-five percent of you did not put this on your CV. Remember, 
what happens? This, they're not looking at summer of code and, and looking at the website and looking at your CV at the same time. What tends to happen is people print out your CV and look at it in isolation. So if you don't have things like what you've done technically, it's a big fat zero. And if there was one thing I'd ask to change in all of your CVs, this would be it. Because it was missing from 75%. Okay? So what do I mean by this? Well, you know, it's this type of thing. So put in a, um, a skill, maybe some sub-attributes about that skill, and how much time have you done it. And some of the examples I'm going to pull out, some people actually talked about it. And I gave them bonus marks because they actually explained how they applied stuff. I didn't expect it. It was a bit wordy, but I'm like, okay, I've got a really good idea what they did. Okay? So this is a minimum of what I expect. And I'll talk about it later. When I graded them, originally here was my scale. Excellent. Okay, couple of mistakes, bad. My eyes are burning. <laughs> if you didn't have this, it was automatically my eyes are burning because I had no freaking idea if you're really good at anything. Okay? Because sometimes some people said I did Java, but it wasn't obvious. If you don't tell me, I don't know. I'm not freaking Superman or whoever reads minds. I can't. Okay? So you've got to be really clear and make sure you do this. So, you know, number one thing to remember from this talk is get that in there and make sure it's current. Alright, five resume tips. We don't really good time. Alright, so resume must be mine two pages. Alright, these slides will be up online by the way, and we can see it. You must adapt your CV to every job. Now, you can't sort of do this in summer of code, but what you can do is if somebody contacts you, um, or you're interested in a particular person, and, and you think that they're interested in you, you could write them a cover letter. Write them an email saying, hey, I saw your company, I think you're doing some pretty interesting stuff. I saw this about your particular thing, I'm, I've got these skills, this might apply. All right? A couple of people did it. Remember, we talked to all of the companies on Egypt. A couple of students actually did it, and they got bonus marks. So it's just like, do so you think about it, if there's 100 CVs, and I want two people, do you think I'm going to look at 100 CVs? All right? First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take interest in the people who've taken interest in me. All right? I'm a CEO. I've got an ego. People who think, you know, say that they like me, ooh, I'll pay attention to them back. Alright? This is human nature here. You know, it's like this freaking farm bill stuff. Farm bill is a classic example of people playing against psychology and using psychology to make people do things. Oh, I did some stuff on your farm, do some stuff back. Alright? This is stroke the person's ego to get a job. Right? Here's a true story today that I saw today just before I came. This guy wanted a job in an advertising agency. So he went to Google and he bought ads for the CEOs or the head um, creative people in five agencies. For their name, it says, Hi. So let's say this to the guy's name. Hi, Brad. I'm, the, 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 I'm looking for a job. Came up first in Google in the Google ad. I think you're cool, I'm cool too, I want a job. <laughs> Guess what? He put up five, he got five interviews, two offered him a job. It cost him six dollars. <laughs> so I'm like, would that even freaking work? You know, in IT, would we Google our own name? Um, well, in the, in the, in the creative engineer, damn well worked. I mean, what a freaking genius. Right? He just said, these guys got massive egos, it's just stroke. <laughs> And you got a job. Very, very smart. But if you're going to meet people, when you're going to network with them, get them to talk to you. Right? Say, hey, I saw your site. It does X. I think it's pretty cool. Tell me about it. And then it's like, ooh, ooh, ooh. I'll tell you. And then when they get your CV, yeah, I remember that guy. It was really cool. You didn't really say much. You just listened. Right? It's a good tip, right? Because you know, they want to know that you're interested in what they're doing. Alright, very important. If there are people doing stuff that you're interested in, go and talk to them.